Good day YouTube, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of Cryptolite. Today, we'll be taking a look at Nows, a blockchain platform which I think is very different from other existing platforms and one that I think has a lot of potential. To find out more about Nows, keep watching this video. Nows describes itself as a global blockchain open source project, which is a highly customizable blockchain infrastructure. Let me explain what that means in simple terms. As a blockchain platform, Nows offers two distinct advantages over other platforms. The first is full customization. So every dApp that is built on this platform can tailor make every aspect of their tech, including having different consensus algorithms. The second advantage is the ease of use. So Nows will make it very easy for developers to develop an app. It has modules which allow developers to create a dApp without really needing to learn cryptographic specific technology like consensus algorithm. I will now explain to you how they do all these and more. In a traditional blockchain design, the dApp is built on the blockchain itself and can take up a significant portion of the blockchain's computational power. That's how a simple game like CryptoKitties managed to cripple the entire Ethereum blockchain. Now uses what is known as sidechains. So dApps that are built on the blockchain uh, are not actually built tapping into the computational power of the blockchain, but they are built separately as a sidechain and they are responsible for their own computational power. So this architecture then allows for great scalability because there is very little burden on the actual blockchain. You might be thinking at this point that this diagram looks very familiar. We use a similar diagram to explain EOS as well as Loom Network and other platforms. And you would be right. Nows is not the only platform to use sidechains. Many other projects also use sidechains. And sidechains is becoming a very popular new architecture in the blockchain space. Now, sidechains in general offer two big advantages. The first is scalability and the second is customization. Theoretically, any project that uses sidechains should be able to scale up to a million transactions per second. The second is customization because each sidechain is technically a separate blockchain. It is not bounded to the laws of the original blockchain. So dApps that are building like on EOS and Loom network, for example, they are also actually very customizable. However, because the buzzword in recent times has been scalability, so those projects EOS and Loom chose to use scalability as the feature they promoted. In contrast, Nows is actually also very scalable, but they have chosen to promote customization as one of their key features. Now it gets a little bit more complicated than that. What makes each platform that uses sidechain different from each other is the way in which the dApp will interact with the mother blockchain. If the link with the mother blockchain is very strong, then the dApp can tap into the benefits of the mother blockchain. For example, the way Loon dApps can utilize Plasma Cash technology of Ethereum. But being very strongly linked to the mother blockchain will also mean that you are bounded more to the laws of the mother blockchain. So keeping that in mind, Now has created its own unique way of interacting with the mother blockchain, which is the Now's blockchain, that will allow dApps to have full customization and ease of use. There are three unique properties to the Now's project. It is modularization, logic, and cross-chain. If you understand these three properties, as well as the unique consensus algorithm, you will understand the Now's project. So let's jump into it. The first feature is modularization. Now, any blockchain will e have essential components like smart contracts, a ledger, which is the record of transactions, storage, network, account, consensus, etc. These are all basic essential components of any blockchain. And in the typical blockchain, all of these components are kind of weaved together into an inseparable mess that is called the blockchain. Nows has something called the module manager and the module manager will split all of these essential components of a blockchain into separate modules. So firstly, when you are assembling the dApp, the project, you can fully customize by selecting your components. You could pick the ledger that you like from Ethereum and combine it with the, the storage that you like from NEO. And then you can use the icon consensus algorithm. So you can basically pick the best of different projects to tailor together a blockchain that suits your needs. The other thing that makes this game changing is really about scalability. 
So just to give you an example, Ethereum now wants to move from proof of work to proof of stake, but it's very hard for them to do so because the consensus algorithm is weaved into the entire network or blockchain. But in NALS, even changing the consensus algorithm is easy and can be done in a day because the modules are separated and the consensus algorithm is basically a module and it's easy to change. This potentially allows any depths on the NALS uh, platform to upgrade from the current blockchain 3.0 to 4.0 or 5.0 in the future even if new technology comes up and they can do this easily with no problems because it's simply changing a module so this technology of modulization i think is game changing when you first build on nows you won't have to create your own modules from scratch the team already has a library of modules that people can choose from. For example, they will have a module for different consensus algorithm. So they will have one module for proof of work, one module for proof of stake. So you just choose whichever consensus uh, algorithm module that you want and put it together with your project. This is why developers don't need to learn cryptographic specific technology to build a dApp. They don't need to know how to code a consensus algorithm from scratch. It's already there. They just need to know how to use it. They can just plug and play the module. Blockchains run on smart contracts. NALS is targeting enterprise users and they understand that business owners and their clients don't necessarily know how to create a smart contract when they want to do a transaction. So NALS has created a sophisticated smart contract system where the user simply needs to input their business logic into the app. For example, I want to buy a car when I have $20,000 and the NALS logic will automatically convert that into a smart contract for them. So they are making it very easy for enterprises to use them. Basically, the end user who's using the app might not even know that they are using a blockchain technology behind the scenes because the technology is that transparent. Nows will also have their own special virtual machine. In blockchain platform projects, a virtual machine is a machine where you can test run your smart contracts to ensure that you have a working product. And because Nows is offering full customization, they can't just use the Ethereum virtual machine, which is the most popular virtual machine that other projects are using. They have to create their own virtual machine that is compatible with any other technology that they use. And they, apparently their virtual machine is also very secure and very easy to use. Unlike Ethereum virtual machine, which only works with the difficult programming language Solidity, Now's virtual machine will be language agnostic, meaning that they will be compatible with any programming language, beginning with the commonly used Java. Now remember how I told you that every dApp on Nows can have their own different consensus algorithm? Nows will enable cross-chain consensus for different projects to communicate with one another. The way it does so is as follows. There is a module that is called the cross-chain module or something similar. And what this module does is that it groups the node on a single sidechain or dApp into different groups. So there will be yellow group, blue group, green group of nodes. Now each of the yellow nodes on a single chain can then interact with yellow nodes from other chains and blue nodes with blue nodes etc. So in this way cross-chain interaction is possible if that module is also included into the dApp design. So this project is so interesting guys you know we've reviewed so many platforms and seen so many technologies before and the technology that now uses is really so refreshing and makes so much sense I really like it. The consensus algorithm they're going to use is called the proof of credit. Proof of credit is basically a combination of proof of stake and a credit system. Think of the credit system like a reputation system. So in proof of stake, you will stake your tokens and the more tokens you have, the more weight you have in the staking process. Proof of credit is the same. You use your tokens to stake, but in addition to just using your tokens, you also have something that is called a credit rating. The credit rating is really a protective mechanism. So if a node was found to be intentionally trying to sabotage the system, they will get a very bad credit rating. And if your credit rating drops below a certain amount, then no money, no matter how many tokens you have, you still cannot take part in the staking process. So this will really help to protect against things like the 51% uh, attack and so on. So it's a very good safety modification to the proof of stake model. The only thing I will point out 
is that proof of stake as a model in general is becoming less and less popular because of a flaw it has. The flaw is that it allows centralization of the staking. So people who have more tokens, who have more staking power, more staking power means they will earn more money and with more money, they will stake even more. So over time, the rich becomes richer and ultimately the rich will end up monopolizing the whole system. That's why many projects, instead of using proof of stake, they are now moving to DPoS or other consensus algorithms. Now, proof of credit will still struggle with this flaw in the long term, because as long as your credit is good, you can simply keep staking more and earning more. So this is something to pay attention to moving forward in the project. But hey, I mean, this is a project that has modularization. So if they wanted to, they could basically change their consensus algorithm anytime in the future if they need to. The project has a minimum staking amount of 2 grand and there will also be master nodes and each master nodes will cost 10,000 tokens which at the moment is over 35,000. That's quite expensive uh, for a master node for a project of the current market cap. And furthermore, if they were to rise in market cap, if they were to do well, which I think they will in the near future, then the master node will be even more expensive and unaffordable. The master node will probably be out of budget for the average token investor, but this means again that the rich investors will be able to get in and own a master node. So again, with the proof of stake, it's becoming a system where the rich will get richer and basically um, there's a risk of them monopolizing the whole staking process um, in the future. Moving on to the token use. The native token is the NAUS token, and the NAUS token will be used for all processors on the mother blockchain, which is the NAUS blockchain itself. This is where you have to be aware of a potential flaw in any platform that uses sidechains. Each sidechain it is allowed to create their own token. So then processing and smart contracts on the sidechains don't necessarily need to use the native token. So not just now, any platform that uses sidechains, you really want to pay attention to the token economy to check that there is a token use and demand. Because if there's no token use, even if the project does really well, you're not going to earn money as a token investor because you're not really investing in the project, you're invested in the token use, if that makes sense. Fortunately, NAUS does address this problem and that's what something that I really like about this project. Now, any other tokens that the dApps create will still be considered a NAUS asset and the tokens um, that are used on the sidechains are not actually the real tokens but contract tokens. So it's like going to the casino, right? You go to a casino, you play with chips and the chips represent a monetary value. But you can't actually take those chips out of the casino. Outside of the casino, they have no value. So in this case, the economy of all the dApps, okay, um, everything that is happening on the dApps will be run on contract tokens, basically like chips, okay. But if they want to take it out of the ecosystem to be on the exchange or to use it in real world, they will have to go back to Nows who holds the original asset and convert them. And the conversion will use Nows token. The other thing that ensures that NAUS tokens will have a demand is that NAUS as a project has set it up so that every time a subchain issues a smart asset like another currency, NAUS tokens will need to be paid. And it's said from the word go that the ratio of NAUS token to the asset um, is fixed. Now, this sounds a bit confusing. Let me give you an example. So, for example, right, if I am Project Z and I create a Z currency, I have to agree from the word go that I will always hold NAUS tokens equivalent of 1% of the value of my total Z currency. So in future, if I was to mint more Z tokens, which means more value, I will also have to buy more NAUS tokens. If the my Z currency price was to rise because my project did really well, um, that means I also need to buy more NAUS tokens. So if you multiply this example by hundreds of dApps, that is the future of NAUS, then that's the demand for the NAUS token in the future. Okay, It's a project that is designed very carefully to ensure that the NAUS token will always have demand. I think this is a great model for NAUS investors. This is the team behind the project. It's not a very big team and it's a very tech heavy team. As always, I won't go through all the profiles, but I will run through a couple of the team members with you. In this case, I'll run through the two co-founders of the project. 
The first co-founder is Ripple Ran, and he's also their community leader. So Ripple Ran has been involved in blockchain technology since 2013. He has in-depth knowledge of community operations, having worked in projects such as BitShares Community and previously been on the NEO Community Board. Lily Wang is the other co-founder and she's also the COO of the project. She has past experience working for Chongqing TV and Science Educational Channel and also Weijing Tong, which provides the Chinese community with daily news. And that's all the or most of the information available on them from their website. Uh, it's very brief resumes. Overall, the team is quite young and the tech team members have at least eight years of tech experience, but it's not like 15 or 20 years as you see in some other project. And their previous development uh, tech experience is not necessarily in blockchain as well. So quite a number of them, this is their first blockchain project. There are also no advisors on the website. So if you guys have been following us, you may get the same feel that I do that Projects without advisors tend to make more mistakes and they also have more difficulty penetrating the market compared to projects with good advisors. So I really think that a good set of advisors is a project to any pro, uh, uh, project. So hopefully they will get some advisors in the near future. The website also doesn't have a list of partnership. Um, I spent the last couple of days asking on Reddit and Telegram uh, about their partnerships and also scrolled through their Twitter for the past few months. Um, what I found was the following. The biggest partnership they seem to have, to my knowledge, is the China Blockchain Alliance. And the China Blockchain Alliance is huge. Okay? They have Chinese government backing for research. So this is probably the biggest partnership I'm aware of. They also partnered with Devery, which is a blockchain project that allows suppliers and consumers to prove the authenticity of their products online before purchase. They are also partnered with AIWTC, which is a global tourism platform. And that's all I could find. So if you know of any more partnerships, please mention them in the comments section below so that others can um, be aware of as well. The roadmap of the project is divided into three stages. It's ice, water and steam. Right now we are in the ice stage and the roadmap for ice stage ends in December of 2018. Water and steam roadmap have not been released yet. Currently the team is a bit behind schedule. Mainnet was supposed to be released last month in the month of May, but currently they are still in testnet. However, their testnet phase is progressing nicely, which is great. It means that we got into this review before the mainnet release and mainnet is simply going to be huge for this project. Uh, their wallet is also due to be released soon and usually the native wallet will be released just before mainnet to assist with the token conversion. In July, Based on the roadmap, the project is due to see the release of the e-wallet, mobile wallet, smart contract, virtual machine compiler, and multilingual adapters. In December, we are due to see the release of the smart contract module and in-chain joins in now. Um, I think in-chain here refers to the decentralized insurance platform. At least that's the only in-chain I know. So again, once again, please correct me in the comment section below if I am missing out anything. Uh, one important news to know about NAUS recently is that they were awarded the 2018 Most Popular Blockchain Project reward in the first Blockchain Leader Summit in Shenzhen, China. So that's huge and I think that this award is really a testament to the quality of the technology of this project. Okay, This is a good project. Um, rounding up with a look at the price point. Right now, the token price is $3.61 and they have a market cap of $143 million. Their ranking over the last uh, week or two has been sitting around 90 to 95 on coin market cap. Their all-time high was at $7.70, so they really have quite a lot of room to recover. They're not even half of their all-time high at this point. Uh, they are already listed on Binance and OKEX, so they are already listed on a couple of very big exchanges. The main upcoming news that I think will really push the price up is mainnet. Okay, The minute they announce when mainnet will be, I expect to see the price um, go on a mini bull run at least. I think we should be able to expect mainnet within the four, the next four to six weeks, definitely by the end of July with the way the, pro the testnet seems to be progressing really, really well. 
on the whole, I really like this project. Okay, I, I personally think that with a market cap of only 143 million, they are very undervalued. Okay, uh, I think very highly of the technology that they are offering. And I believe that as a blockchain platform, they have a lot to offer to the crypto space. They don't have any major advisors or partnerships yet. That's why they are they don't have the high profile that they need yet. But with the technology that they are offering and the kind of uh, awards that they're winning, it's only going to be a matter of time before this project becomes uh, goes into the limelight, becomes a very high profile project. And then I think people will really appreciate them for what they're worth. Furthermore, with staking rewards, you know, and a very good and careful token use and demand on the ecosystem, as well as a current very low market cap, I think that this is a great project to invest in currently. So this is all my personal opinion, guys. This is definitely not professional advice. So please do your own research and make your own decisions. That's my thoughts on now, guys. This is definitely a project I will be keeping my eye on. So thank you so much for joining us and let us know in the comment section below what you think of Nows and this video. Also, if you are watching this video in the near future and you have more information about partnerships, mainnet, launch date, wallet, any sort of information about this project that the community should be aware of, do let us know in the comment section below as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video, do give us that like and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. And I'll catch you guys again very soon.